This is huge. POV, you're emu, right? And there's this Lelusia kingdom which you don't like. You don't like it at all. Maybe it's because it's ruled by potentially literal vampires or that its main export is this girl's milk. Doesn't matter what the reason is because you're emu. You don't need reasons, you answer to no one. So you say to yourself, hey, Supreme Overlord of the world, how about we make it so that this island never existed? And then you do that thing, but something happens, something that even you did not expect. Because this action was not as straightforward as we think. And it comes equipped with a lot of new questions, questions which demand new answers and questions that you don't necessarily see upon your first read through. For example, how does a hole in the ocean result in rising sea levels? Surely it's now acting like an unplugged bath and water levels are reducing. Well, we have a couple of explanations for this. One is reasonable and backed up by fictional physics. The second is logical, but absolutely terrifying. And the third is so out of this world insane that the only world it could possibly work in is this one. But explanation number one is that the rising sea levels are a result of water displacement. Like filling a bathtub to the rim, then hopping in and having the water overflow as a result of your rotund mass entering its delicately balanced sanctum. Except with Lelucia, it's less about water and more about land. Lelucia wasn't a floating island, so there was land extending all the way down to the seafloor, which is a long way, at least 10,000 meters. So the idea is that the weapon breaks up all of that land, which is then displaced into the sea and causes the same effect. What this idea banks on is that Lelucia itself wasn't vaporized out of existence, just broken up to the point where its integrity as an island could no longer be sustained. And because there's some sort of mystery force ensuring that this hole remains a void, that land then needs to find a new home elsewhere. And another great way of explaining it would be like putting an empty bucket into a thing of water. There's nothing in the bucket, but that nothing is still taking up space and thus displacing all of the water that was once there. That's the reasonable explanation. Now here's the terrifying one. Also, this video is sponsored by Honkai Impact 3rd. The open world sensation packed with immersive stories, stunning graphics, amazing cinematics, fantastical puzzles, and a litany of bosses for your destructive whims. For version 6.8, we find ourselves in chapter 38 at the climax of the story between the black and white world. And to celebrate, we have a new S rank battle suit called Hersher of Rebirth, a Psy type damage dealer with two forms being the terrifying sounding Soul Shaper and Life Binder. Also, there's a brand new elf called Project Bunny who is simply delightful. And as part of the ongoing story, a new limited event called Chasing Light Drinking Shadow will be going online as well, allowing players to collect funky moon rocks. But most importantly though, what are we wearing? Well, we have new outfits for Dark Bolt John In, Mr. Lane, and Starlit Astrologus. So I guess that's, that's what we're wearing. You can and should download Honkai Impact 3rd using my link in the description and use the code REBIRTH to get great rewards. And new players will have even more bonus content to explore. So do that thing, but for now it's back to you, me. Here's my theory. The earthquake had nothing to do with the Lucia, since it occurred six days later and was felt all over the world at the same time. I think that was actually Blackbeard returning home and finding his town burned down. His slaves and prisoners escaped and his crew badly hurt. Then he threw a tantrum with the quake fruit. Okay, so I really like the thinking here because it did specify earthquakes and the timeline does kind of match up. We've skipped a whole night, so this may have been enough time for Blackbeard to return home, see the absolute shit show the Marines caused on Hachinosu, and uncharacteristically, angrily release a burst of power that was said to be quite literally capable of destroying the world. I mean, I say uncharacteristically, but Blackbeard has always been such an inconsistent character. Smart and dumb, brave yet cowardly, composed and tantrumy. He is all of them. As much as I like the idea, I do think that the simplest and likely correct answer is still Emu's weapon, because the narrator makes a point of highlighting Lucia and connecting the ensuing earthquakes to this event. That's the connection that Oda as an author wants us to draw. And maybe it is some sort of grand red herring for Blackbeard. And if it is, that would be pretty undeniably cool. To actually see a demonstration of his power like that would make him such an imposing threat. But also the same thing is true of Emu and I do think it fits much better for the figure who sits at the top of the world to have this kind of power. It's also starting to make me wonder about the Noah and how this mighty vessel is gonna be put to use because at this rate, Otohime's dream of living on the surface is gonna be Uno reversed and the humans are gonna to need to learn to coexist with fishmen underwater or other humans currently living on the sea floor, but not underwater. Let me explain because here is the insane idea. Lelucia doesn't not exist, meaning that it's still there, but on the bottom of the ocean. They will admit this is 
a leap, but this is also One Piece. And the idea is that the weapon pushed the island down to the sea floor, but Lucia still exists. Just near the bottom of this grand hole that no one can get near, much less down. And the reason why I like this idea has nothing to do with this particular Lucia hole, but another hole. Because it would mean that whatever island used to be in the Any Slobby Void may still exist, which would be a dream adventure for certain pirate captains and archeologists. And the initial idea was that Any Slobby could have been the location of God Valley. In terms of world placement, it makes a lot of sense. However, I can now state with confidence that this is not the case. And it's all because of this comment. I don't think the hole under Any Slobby is God Valley just cause of the timeline. If I remember correctly, the giants that were looking for Dory and Broggy have been there longer than the God Valley incident, meaning Any Slobby has been there for a very long time. This is 100% pure sense. Oimo and Kashi were confirmed to have been guards at Any Slobby for over 50 years because Dory and Broggy were fighting for 100 years and 50 years after that began is when Oimo and Kashi began their 100 year deal to guard Any Slobby and God Valley happened 38 years ago. So Any Slobby is 100% not the God Valley location, which is amazing because that only raises crazier questions because that means that Any Slobby is a completely different location that required erasing for some reason. So what could Any Slobby have been? Maybe it was even the site of the ancient kingdom. But also, does that mean there's a third big F off hole somewhere in the world? That hole representing God Valley's location? And if so, how does it go so unnoticed? There are definitely possibilities. I mean, somehow Zunesha, a 35 kilometer tall elephant can exist in this world. And most people can sail across the entire planet and not find it. But also perhaps locations like the Florian Triangle where you just literally can't see anything. And maybe instead of the giant monster shadow, what's responsible for the disappearances of the ships is simply a giant giant hole that they accidentally sail into. With that said, that doesn't work for God Valley either though, because the Florian Triangle has been making ships vanish for what, like at least a hundred years now? But you get the idea. There are plenty of spaces in the One Piece planet where you could hide a giant island sized void. But this chapter also raises questions about the weapon itself and the mother flame. Is the mother flame an energy source for the ancient weapon? As a sun god, Luffy should eat these flames, right? So the second part of the question sounds stupid, but also kind of not. Luffy in Gear 5th is seemingly limitless in terms of his interactions with the world. He even made lightning tangible, just ripped it from the sky and threw it right at Kaido. So why can't he read the first few volumes of Fairy Tale and just decide to chuck an Atsu and eat some fire? There's no reason why he could absolutely do it if he wanted to. But we do have the question about the Mother Flame again. And I think it's confirmed in this chapter that the Mother Flame is indeed an energy source, not a weapon in and of itself. Because York snuck it off the island without the other Vegapunks noticing, which I imagine Imagine would have been pretty impossibly difficult if it was some sort of UFO island sized weapon. Surely someone would notice that went missing. So I think the leading idea now is that Emu has a firm grip on Uranus, but was unable to make use of it because it ran out of fuel. But now there is, there's new fuel, it's called Mother Flames, and the Lucia was used as a test. Also this clears Vegapunk Stella once again, because he's a figure who is continuously subject to the Oppenheimer allegations. But to be fair, that's because whether he means to or not, he keeps creating weapons of mass destruction. In this case, the Mother Flame being used by Emu wasn't directly his fault, but his work still ended up causing that destruction. But the panel I appreciated most in chapter 189 was when we got to see Water 7, because rising sea levels impact them more than any other island. Well, with the exception of the ones that just plain sunk, they, they were pretty impacted. But Water 7 itself might be the island equivalent of tree rings, showing us how many times this weapon has been used in the past, gradually sinking this particular island that started off very low, and they had to keep building on top of it to survive, especially since Water 7 is so close to any slobby, which is our only other confirmed destruction site. To the point where Iceberg's current dream is to turn Water 7 into a floating island to circumvent this, and he might have to work a bit faster than he anticipated. Although I should say this is a dream that was actually realized already by Gecko Moria turning Thriller Bark into an island ship, and good on Moria. It goes to show that just because you fail at your dream doesn't mean that you can't be a prick and steal someone else's dream. Back to Egghead Island though now, because because this is a very good point. Those 30,000 Marines are useless as soon as Luffy unleashes a wave of Conqueror's Haki. You know, that's actually potentially true. 30,000 sounds like a colossal number until you remember that back when Fishman Island, Luffy knocked out 50,000 new Fishman pirate members with one burst of Haki. If anything, bringing 30,000 Marines is more like a liability here because you've got to protect them as well, protect and feed them. I do truly wonder what the difference in power would be if we just took Kizaru and the Nine Vice Admiral 
problems. It wouldn't be as epic, but that is 99% of their power base right there. I guess the idea is that you need all the ships to form a blockade and then you need all the Marines to operate the ships to form the blockade. So the 30,000 Marines are just a glorified impenetrable wall of meat. But then again, how good is meat anything versus Luffy? Not very. And the Straw Hats are in a very powerful position now, which I think is summed up by this. I also love the subversion of the off screen. Really enforces the idea that the Straw Hats are a different breed now. So this has been met with mixed reactions, but I really like it. In a way, it's Oda showing us what it's like to actually live in the One Piece world. You go to sleep one night and then bam, the next day the Straw Hats have caused another world changing event. And in a way it shows that they've also now graduated to being major world players because there's no greater narrative sign of being at the pinnacle of power in the series than needing to be off screened. In terms of how the Straw Hats have grown, Kizaru is also the perfect admiral to show this. He was the one who decimated not only the Straw Hats, but most of the supernova on Sabadi, all on his own for the most part. And this rarely gets brought up, but I've never forgotten Luffy's interaction with Kizaru at Marineford either. He shot Luffy clean through the stomach and then said, guts alone aren't enough straw hat Luffy. Bit of a pun there, because it's shot through the gut. It takes more than effort alone to save someone. You've got to have power, which was an interesting interaction. Because what you have here is a character with 100% drive and comparatively 0% power versus a character with 100% power and 0% drive. And now, years later, Luffy has that power. And I think that knowing this, Kizaru should be very scared. Because yeah, he's a bit empty headed, but even he can do the maths. He's witnessed Luffy's drive firsthand and even admitted that the only thing he was lacking was power. Well, now he has it. He's such an appropriate admiral because he's the only one of the five that just lacks drive altogether. Every other admiral has their own personal principle that they stand up for, but Kizaru has nothing that we know of. So in a fight of Luffy versus Kizaru, right Right now, I would have to pick Luffy due to that factor. Oh, and 1089 gave us another pretty wild gift. Something that I definitely did not pick up on during my first read through. Interesting how Saturn refers to Bonnie as a little girl. Is it possible that Bonnie is actually much younger than we think? I think that is very possible. It's so possible that I've already started going back on every time that Bonnie has appeared in the series and it makes a shocking amount of sense. There's so much in retrospect that we, we just did not notice about Bonnie and it's all lying in plain sight. It's like when Momonosuke outright said that he'd met Goldie Roger and everyone, even the fan base, shrugged it off as a child lying. But you look back on it now and go, no, in that moment, Momonosuke gave the entire game away. The problem is that this Bonnie business is simply too big and we're gonna need to cover it in a whole video of its own.